Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Chris. Do me a favor and smash that subscribe button. So the mailman came by, dropped off the four link kit that I've been waiting on for the YJ build. Um, the kit that I decided to go with was the universal uh, upper triangulated inch and a quarter kit from Barnes four wheel drive. Um, while I've been waiting on them to deliver it, I've been kind of tossed around in my head how I wanted to do this video. And I decided I wanted to kind of take it old school and show you guys a way to do it at home, you know, with some really basic, basic hand tools. Um, so all I'm really going to be doing to center the axle and, and square it up is uh, I'm going to be using a plumb bob, framing square, a three foot magnetic level, a tape measure, a couple angle finders, um, and obviously a good welder. So what well, first things first, before we can even mock anything up, I gotta get this axle underneath the Jeep. So hang tight, let me get that done. All right guys, so got the axle underneath the Jeep. Uh, we gotta start working on squaring it up and centering it. Uh, but before we do that, we gotta work on, on placing how far back we want it. Uh, I talked about one of the other videos that I, I am going to be stretching the, the wheelbase on this Jeep, but I haven't really 100% decided on what I'm going to be at. Um, I wanted to wait on the wheels and tires to get here so I can uh, play around with it and see exactly where I'm the happiest. Because I have kind of a look in my head that I'm going for. And so I already played around with it and, and got it where I like it. And um, I'm sitting at about eight and a half uh, to nine inches of stretch. And I'm really happy with the way it looks. So now what I got to do is I got to get the measurement uh, and transfer it to the other side. So the, what we're going to do to do that is we're going to take a reference point off the frame. Um, I'm going to use the old leaf spring hangers, uh, mainly because we know that they're same on both sides of the frame. So we're just going to shoot the, uh, the tape off the center of the tube. And we are at 28 and 3 quarters. So I'm going to get the other side to the same, and then we're going to come back and make sure that everything's still good. Okay, so other side's at 28 and 3 quarters. Now we just want to make sure that when I when I slid that around, nothing uh, nothing got changed on this side. And we're, we're still good, so this side's still at 28 and 3 quarters. So now the, the next thing that we're going to have to do is we have to get the axle centered underneath the frame rails. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to get a measurement of the frame width and and then we're gonna work on uh, doing some math. Okay, so we are at 42 and three quarters. Now, axle width, I'm gonna go off the backing plates. So we are at 60 and three eighths. So now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go 60 and three eighths. We're going to subtract the 42 and three quarters. That gives us 17 and five eighths. So now we take the 17 and five eighths. We divide that in half. If we divide that in half. It gets us eight and 13 sixteenths. So now what that we're going to do with that number is we're going to transfer it onto the axle tube. So from the backing plate in, we're going to get our mark at eight and 13 sixteenths. So, I actually already subtracted the width of the backing plate. So, that puts my mark at eight and a half. So, now I'm going to get the other side marked and we're going to start getting this axle centered. Okay, so now we've got both sides of the axle marked. Uh, now, we're going to use our plumb bob and we're going to drop a line. So, what we're going to do is we're going to hang off the side of the frame and we're going to let that lie right over our mark. And we're gonna try to get this as close as we can to that mark. Okay, so I'm within about a 16th of an inch of it. I'm gonna jump to the other side and see how that one looks. And then I'm gonna make some adjustments from there.
All right, guys. So now that we uh, made the adjustments to the uh, the driver's side, we're back here on the passenger side, and and just double checking ourselves and making sure that that everything still lines up and is is centered. Um, the driver's side was, I was about the thickness of the tip of that plumb bob on the outside of the line, and we're we're the same on this side. Cool. So we've got the uh, the axle centered, squared up. Now the next thing we have to worry about is the pinion. Um, so the pinion angle on this, I'm going to be running equal length, upper and lower lengths. And what that means is I'm going to want my pinion pointed straight at the transfer case. The The reason for that is, is that when you, when you have equal length, upper and lower lengths, as the axle travels down and up, it's going to stay pointed at the, uh, at the transfer case. So I've already done that. Uh, now, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna start worrying about lower length placement. Now, the lower links, I want them as wide as I could get, uh, but I have to worry about them making contact with the tire. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the tire and we're gonna get some measurements off the wheel and try to figure out placing those lower links. Okay, so now, to get the measurements on the tire so we know where to place those lower links, all I'm doing is I'm taking a, a level and I'm setting it on the, the highest point of the tire. So I got some uh, tread blocks that are on the sidewalls and I just have it set right on top of the highest ones. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get my measurement off the mounting surface of the wheel to the, uh, to the level and I'm at six and three quarters. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take that back over the axle and get a mark so we know where to place the uh, the lower link. All right, so now that we have that measurement, we're just gonna transfer it over to the, to the tube. The next thing that we have to worry about is gonna be our upper and lower link separation at the axle. Um, we, we're gonna be running a 40 inch tire. Um, you want to run 25% of the tire size. So with a 40, we're going to be at about 10 inches of length separation. So the upper I've already measured from the ground up is at 27 and a half. So for the lower link, we want that to be at 17 and a half off the ground. So I'm going to measure that up and I'm going to tack it in place. So now I got to get the uh, lower mount uh, on the frame for the uh, lower links. And all I did was I just cut off just enough for that bracket to fit between the skid plate and the, uh, the old leaf spring bracket. And I'm just going to butt this up against the leaf spring bracket. That way I know it's the same on both sides. So the lower link brackets are, are tacked onto the frame. Um, so now you see, I got the uh, lower links kind of mocked up with PVC. I always do that first until I get a chance to cycle the suspension. Um, I just want to make sure that there's no adjustments that I'm gonna have to make, um, where maybe the links might have to get a little longer. Uh, the last thing you want to do is, you know, do everything done with the DOM tubing and then, you know, come to find out you're an inch short and, you know, now it just cost you two, 300 bucks in DOM tubing. Uh, the PVC is like an extra 20, 30 bucks. It's a heck of a lot cheaper. Trust me. Ask, ask me how I know. 
So now all I gotta do is I just gotta get this bracket out of the way from the, uh, the old leaf spring mount and we'll be able to get this uh, up into place. All right, halfway done. So now we gotta start worrying about the upper links. Um, the easiest way to, to figure out where the brackets need to be placed on the frame is just to assemble your link. Um, so I did it out of PVC just like the lowers, just for mock-up purposes. Uh, now I've got the brackets bolted onto it and everything. All I'm going to do is set one out of the truss, and that's going to help me land where the, uh, the frame side bracket needs to be. Um, then we'll get it tacked in and keep going. So it's all mocked up. Um, all I'm gonna do is cycle it up and down real quick just to make sure that there's no interference issues or anything like that, no binding on the joints. Uh, but other than that, nothing too crazy. Don't wanna go you know, too nuts with it. It is just PVC and duct tape holding the hind joints in. Um, but once I make sure that everything's good, I'll be able to move on to making the links. Alright guys, so that does it for this video. Uh, the next video I'm going to be doing is going to be how to build the links. And check that out. I'm going to go over some really cool tips and tricks on that to make it super easy to make them. Um, now, I wanted to kind of go over a few things when it comes to building your four link on your Jeep. Um, some guidelines, if you will. Now, why do I say guidelines? Well, you know, it's all going to come down to packaging, right? Uh, so, the, the first thing is you want your upper link flat. Um, when you build it, just get that thing perfectly flat. Now, your lower link, you want that at an absolute maximum of 10 degrees. Uh, mine, for instance, came out to, uh, it came out to seven and a half degrees. So the, the big struggle with, with meeting that expectation is going to be the next part. And the next part is you need to worry about your link separation at the axle. Now, the rule of thumb on that is 25% of tire size. So I'm running a 40 inch tire that puts me at about 10 inches of link separation. Uh, you know, that's going to push your lower link down. That makes it kind of hard to get in that 10 degree mark or less. Right? So there's going to be some compromises. You might have to raise that, that link mount on the axle up a little bit or drop down off the frame a little bit. Um, sometimes a combination of both. Um, so that's, that's why I say, like I said, these are guidelines, some, some basics that you want to follow to try to get this, uh, it, you know, system set up in a way that your Jeep's going to react and handle decent. Um, so now the next thing I wanted to really point this out, this is something that, you know, I've noticed on the forums and on other videos, you know, people mention, but don't go into a lot of detail with. So, you know, it's always mentioned 40 degrees of triangulation. Now, that's 40 degrees total triangulation. So, for instance, with my Jeep, 
you saw that I outboarded the lower mounts, right? So I have about eight degrees of lower triangulation on each link. So that, that puts me at 16 degrees of lower triangulation. Then I have 20 degrees on each upper link. So that puts it at 40 degrees of upper triangulation. That's 56 degrees of total triangulation. So the more the better, but the 40 is minimum. And that's a combination of upper and lower. Sometimes you're gonna end up running into these issues where maybe you're only able to get 30 degrees of upper triangulation. You gotta make up that other 10 degree minimum somewhere. You know, and that's gonna be on the lower links. So, you know, I just wanted to kind of point that out. Cause like I said, it's not really elaborated on very much. And I wanted to, you know, give you guys some good insight on that. So those of you who are struggling hitting that 40 degree mark, you know, look to the lower links. So if you got any comments, questions, suggestions, leave them down below. I try to get back to everybody that comments. Um, hopefully you like and subscribe, follow along on this uh, journey to one tons and forties.